Hello, nice to see you again. In many of my videos and in my print publications, I mentioned the enormous resistance towards using third-party digital elements, especially video. As a matter of fact, many teachers simply don't want to use material they haven't produced themselves. And they feel that they lose control if they use third-party material. In the following, I will argue that this is an unjustified impression and I will show how control can be maintained or regained. In a classical teaching and learning format, teachers were fully responsible for the content, let's say for content about predicate logic. They went to the library, selected some books or articles which they had not written themselves and decided which parts of the books should constitute the basis for in-class content delivery and beyond. The teachers were fully in charge and could thus show their academic expertise. The control of academic content is also possible in a digital world where video has replaced classical print references to a large extent. How we can reference these videos and manage access control, I will show in the following. A simple way of accessing YouTube videos uses the share option. With a simple mouse click we can open an overlay which generates the specific YouTube URL which we can copy and use to access the video. Additionally, we define the start time for the video and thus partly control video runtime. So without much additional work we can generate a hyperlink with this general structure. It automatically generates the video reference and optionally adds the start time. Here are two examples that should be self-explanatory. In other words, just like in a book where we recommended particular pages or chapters for reading, we can now freely define the start time of a video. But what about the end? The definition of the time where we want the video to stop not only requires the share option, but also the so-called embed option. Via mouse click, we can thus generate the HTML code for a so-called inline frame, that is, a frame that hosts or embeds the video on a website. Let us look at the basic components of the iframe in more detail. The iframe code is contained within the iframe tags, which in turn host several attribute value pairs. The attribute SRC, which stands for source, defines the embedded video. The two attributes, width and height, define the size of the video in pixels and if we want to have a frame around the video we can use the attribute frame border and define its size in pixels. Well and if we want to allow the full screen mode we can include the allow full screen attribute without further values. And to control video access we have to expand the value of the source attribute. This is simple the embed URL appears automatically and the start time in seconds can be defined interactively. However, if we want to define the stop time too, we have to add it by hand and define the time in seconds. With these options, we can define which parts of a video are suitable for content delivery just like we did with books. Just another mode of academic content control, isn't it? By the way, there are two YouTube video licenses. The standard YouTube license 
and the Creative Commons license. Both allow sharing and embedding unless otherwise specified by the channel owner. And videos with the Creative Commons license can even be downloaded and remixed, allowing even more control. The only condition, the original author has to be mentioned. Okay, that's it. I hope that the access control options I described will reduce your resistance towards open content. Honestly, there are no real excuses not to use high quality content, even if you are not the producer. So, thanks for your attention and see you again soon.